think that some of the reasons of this are internal. Um, the relocation process has created some natural tensions among the Gunas themselves at several levels. There are different um, criteria among the Guna General Congress, the, 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 the big um, decision-making body, uh, and the local congresses regarding how to handle the relocation. Uh, there have been some differences among individuals in the Gardi uh, community itself, uh, differences between people who live in Gardi Subdub and the diaspora in Panama City, um, and also some tensions with members of other Guna communities who would like to relocate to Gardi Subdub. Uh, new site. Um, among the external reasons, um, there have been unexpected delays on the relocation process and four years have already passed, passed since the first time the community started preparing the relocation site. Um, so some of those uh, reasons are, as I mentioned, changes in the leadership level of Cardi Subdub, uh, delays by the Ministry of Housing regarding the construction of the, the first 65 houses. Um, and also, there have been many false promises or promises that have not yet materialized, which have contributed to creating a lot of frustration and uncertainty about the, the relocation. So let's, let's check um, now a little bit about the role of the Panamanian government in the relocation from that um, Gardi Subdub island. Um, we believe that the Panamanian government has taken a very fragmented approach to relocation in Gunayala and has not developed any coordinated or systematic uh, plan in this regard. Several ministers have developed some very impressive projects in the area of Gardi Subdub, such as building a health center and a school complex, and there is a promise to build a first group of 65 houses. Uh, those, um, these projects are being implemented on land, also provided by the community uh, next to the relocation site or the planned uh, relocation site, as a result, if you go there, it seems that um, all those activities were part of a coordinated plan by the Panamanian government for a relocation. But unfortunately, the reality is that each intervention has been completely disconnected from uh, one from the next. So let's, let's look at some of those interventions in detail, and a little bit of detail, the health center. Uh, so the uh, Panamanian Ministry of Health is currently investing, or, or in the previous government, um, that ended around the beginning of this year, uh, they invested heavily in health infrastructure, infrastructure all over the countries. One of the health centers that is currently in the process of being built is located in Gardi Subdu with an investment, uh, investment of $11.6 million with funds mainly from a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank. The construction started in October 2011 and officially was planned that they will be finished by June of 2014. Um, however, when we visited uh, the first time in March, at the end of March uh, of this year, this is what we found. Um, so I will say for um, Latin American uh, standards, this is a kind of very impressive um, health center. Uh, and this is the first type of investment that is made in an indigenous community in, in, in Panama. So on September 21st, last time that um, I was there, this is what I found. So the only difference between the two pictures is that the building was painted a little bit, they even finished. Um, okay, so regarding the school, um, the projected school complex, uh, the same, the, the Panamanian government is also in the process of building a very impressive ex school complex in, in Gardi Subdub, which includes 41 classrooms, laboratories, a gym, cafeteria, library, and dormitories for 60 students and 16 teachers. And the whole project will benefit around 1,200 students. And the total cost of that project is around $10.8 million. And is um, built with funds from a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank. Um, the studies for the construction of the school complex started in 2011, and in theory, it should be ready by October 2014. Um, the, this is, uh, in our first visit, we went to the site to visit with some members of the community with what is called the Neighborhood Committee. Uh, so this is the place where the 
because uh, the school, um, and this is a graphic that was provided by the Minister of Education of how it will look like. Um, probably will look, not look like this because the, the, the terrain is, is, um, is not as flat as this, um, but this is what they have in mind. Uh, this is what we found in our visit uh, last September 31st. So the projected housing project. Um, in 2011, the Neighborhood Committee of Cardi Subdub approached the Ministry of Housing and requested to build some houses for their relocation. Uh, the community offered uh, 17 hectares of land that they own for the project. The Ministry um, elaborated a blueprint that they called Nuevo Cartí with the idea of building the first 65 um, houses. Um, according to the design, each family will have a lot of 450 square meters and the projected houses would, uh, would be only 36, uh, 36 square meters, 6 by 6 meters, with cement floors, walls made with bamboo and roots covered with zinc. Uh, the project have not started. This uh, picture was facilitated by the uh, some officials at the Ministry of um, of Housing, and this is a this is a, a prototype of houses that they have been building in some indigenous in other indigenous communities. Um, so we um, we ask ourselves in, in in the in the study if, if like plan or a plan for location. Uh, we believe that it's uh, everyone's best interest to proceed with the relocation of the Gardisudu community in addition to all of the other communities in Gunayala that need to be relocated <coughs> without the urgency of a natural disaster that uh, could put an unnecessary burden on the Guna people as well to the Panamanian state. Uh, should the relocation proceed even in the absence of a plan? Uh, we believe that uh, an unplanned relocation should be avoided as much as possible but not by opposing the relocation of Gardi Subduk, uh, that they have been working on this for more than five, four, four years, but by actively collaborating with the community in a credible, credible and viable plan. Um, and we still believe, and this is a message that we, that we uh, mentioned throughout the whole report, uh, is that there are a lot of elements that uh, there's still time to make this relocation a very successful uh, one, and this if, uh, is well planned and well done, uh, it could become a model for um, other um, relocation processes in Gunayala and other areas of Panama affected by uh, rising sea levels and uh, in other places around the world as well. So the other question that we ask is if is climate change the only reason to relocate? And it, uh, we answer ourselves that uh, it appears to us that the lack of space on the islands is what people in Gardisutuk see as the most pressing as is it affects their everyday life. Uh, the rise of sea levels uh, is um, an imminent threat that is magnified uh, during few months of the year and, and throughout the year when there is uh, bad weather. Um, however, it's the combination of factors that make the relocation a necessity, the lack of a space and uh, the, 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 the fact that the, 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 the ocean has been, uh, the ocean level has been increasing there. Um, so we, we also need to remember, as uh, some authors mentioned, and remind us that um, any, the, the casualty behind any migration decision is a very complex one. And there is never a simple a stimulus response process as, as authors like Robert Mack and McLeeman uh, mentioned. Um, so some of the conclusions uh, that we have in our report uh, is that we believe that the worst case scenario for the Gardi Subdub community and for all the communities in Gunayala is, as, as we mentioned, that a sudden and forced permanent relocation as a result of a natural disaster. So as a result, that there is an urgent need to act before this occurred. Um, and the relocation of, of Cardi Subdub and the entire Gunayala region presents a major challenge in terms of planning, and it should be supported immediately by the Panamanian government, the international, uh, international financial institutions, and the uh, international community. Um, approximately um, 28,000 
people will eventually have to move in the next uh, decades from the islands to, uh, of Gunayala to the mainland. Um, any relocation project uh, also will need to take into account and make room for a portion of the Guna diaspora that lives outside of Gunayala. Um, this group might decide to go back to their land and could add uh, roughly other uh, 12,000 people. Um, as, as a result, we are talking probably about 40,000 people who will have to move to a, to a mainland area that is mainly covered by forest. The Gunayala um, region actually is the, has the, uh, the, the most well-preserved forest in, in Panama. Also, the important to keep in mind that the problems with mosquito-related diseases on the main line, which spurred the Gunas to move to the islands in the first place 100 years ago, are still in existence and cannot be ignored. Uh, as a result, the relocation of uh, the Guna people is also a challenge in terms of public health. Uh, the Panamanian government should take seriously the possibility that malaria and yellow fever outbreaks occur where the Gardi sub subdued community is planning to relocate. And this is uh, even um, more urgent, even if the community still have to wait um, longer uh, to move there. But when the, the school complex is finished, um, around 1,200 uh, Guna students will be uh, studying there. Um, and that presents other uh, type of challenges for the community. No one know uh, if the community has not been relocated, who will uh, organize all the logistics of moving the students uh, on a daily basis uh, to the mainland and back and forth. So we also believe that um, the relocation of the Guna people will present challenges in, in terms of internal negotiations and arrangement amongst the Gunas themselves. As it was mentioned in the case of Cardi Subduk, they make their own arrangements so that some people, um, some families donated land, but this might not happen in other places. It will be more complicated. So, um, so the, the, this, uh, we believe that, um, that if the Guna authorities and institutions are weakened in the years to come, a relocation in Gunayala might not happen in an orderly and successful way, or it, or it might not happen at all. And we believe uh, that if this is the outcome, everyone will, everyone will lose, not only the, the, Kuna, the Kuna people. Um, I think this is what I have to uh, present today, and I will be happy to have your comments or questions. This is, I, I would say that this is a kind of a very unique case. Um, this is very different from the, the small island states in the Pacific where people don't have uh, a place to go. So the Gunas, they, again, they live mostly in the islands, but they own the whole Gunayala region. So the 
they have a land, and the land is in their name. Um, so, and the land, by the way, is not occupied by anyone. They use the land, actually the Gardi, uh, my first surprise actually when I went there and I heard that, that you will arrive to the Gardi port, I was expecting a settlement there, even an hotel or something or some houses, but there is only a restaurant uh, and the port, but no one lives there. So the, the, the Gunas used, as I mentioned at the beginning, the land uh, in the coast to, to have crops, um, but is, is mostly covered by forest. Uh, so this is one issue. So there will not be an issue of, of integration in that land because it's not occupied. Yes, there is an, an issue of integration if the communities have to move to other um, places in, in uh, cities like Panama City, but there is also um, ways of um, uh, of, that the Guna has found to integrate. They typically live in, 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 like in the case of Panama City, in some neighborhoods. So actually we visited, and I have some pictures of some Gunas in the streets in that neighborhood. We met with the, um, this committee of the diaspora um, in Panama City um, because they, they meet every Sunday or every other Sunday. Um, we talked to them and we uh, found that um, this community of Garde Subdub, actually, they own um, the, a building in Panama City, and it's a kind of an embassy that the, the authorities use when they have to go to Panama City to do some official um, trip. Um, so they are very well organized in the city. They keep a lot of ties, um, but um, so some authors have, uh, have um, work this issue of integration in Panama City in, in what I unfortunately didn't have time to go deeper on that, uh, on that issue, but it's an important one. Can you say again what the level of rise of the water uh, is over the last uh, century and the last decade? And also are, are other places in Panama threatened? Um, yes. Um, the, the measure of what, what um, Guzman and his team uh, with this caveat of the, uh, of the typo in the publication, they found, uh, what they found uh, is, is similar to what has been found in other, in other places. So it's, it's kind of typical, uh, like two millimeters, um, most of the last century, and with an acceleration to three, three millimeters um, every year uh, during the last um, 30 years, or a couple, couple decades. Um, yes, another, um, uh, actually, last um, two weeks ago, I was in Panama uh, releasing the report. We, we, we have a, a version in Spanish and, uh, of, of the report, and we, uh, we organized uh, a couple public events, and uh, I was expecting some uh, media attention, but I have to say that I was very surprised of the all the media attention that, uh, that our report um, received in, in Panama. And in many ways, um, in many ways, this is not, uh, there is, we were not uh, telling anyone something totally new. It has been in the news for so, those who were paying attention. And again, it has been, um, a study published more than 10 years ago, a, a scientific study that mentioned this on academic workshops. Um, even the Gunas had, in, have a, in their statutes, in their law, own laws, they have an article that, that kind of regulate relocation. Um, so they, this is a, a, a topic that has been an issue at least of conversation. But I think that um, if if, if there is some, um, if, 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 if I will say that if there is a contribution of on our report, the main one was like to put together information that was very dispersed um, and try to organize it in a systematic way. And the, we found that people were very surprised, like, um, and, and, and talking about media, government officials, the public, um, environmental NGOs, 
uh, so they were like they never never um, people have heard for years that Panama would be one of the main one of the countries that would be uh, severely affected by um, climate change, um, but there had not been enough uh, systematic studies, and it's not really uh, an agency, a state agency, paying enough attention to this. Um, we also um, have the opportunity to meet with the uh, state institution in charge of, um, of um, prevention of disaster prevention. Um, and they, um, the, despite that they have, the Panama has been following uh, kind of all the international guidelines uh, on, on this topic, they, um, they, have not, uh, they, they have not implemented any measures in indigenous communities. So they were very surprised to learn that this was going on in, in, in Panama. So obviously we were even more surprised because they were in charge of um, risk um, reduction and prevention, and um, nothing uh, has been done so far. Any other questions? Um, thank you very much for the presentation. I'm sorry um, I came in a little late, um, so I don't know that you covered this, uh, one of my questions. Um, one is, um, was this relocation done with the, the participation of the people concerned? Uh, in other words, you know, did the government talk to them and Second question is about the peninsula principles. If you can talk a little bit about um, the, the principles themselves and why they were adopted and who adopted them, um, because they apply uh, in relation to internal displacement, and there is already uh, the direct principles on internal displacement. So if you can, you know, compare the two and say why these principles are different. That would be great. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Okay, the, the issue of relocation. Uh, again, um, what, what we found is um, you go there. This is the, 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 the Gardis uh, Subdub community. Uh, is the, the first community that in Gunayala took the decision of relocating. Um, we didn't have the time or the tools to really dig deeper um, how that worked internally. Uh, this is still uh, there is still a lot of uh, a, a lot of room for further research for academic research to go there. Um, I, I don't know exactly like um, so, but you find that a community that took this decision. We um, we met with another community that um, actually decided that they will not relocate for now. Um, I have some picture of. Of, of that meeting uh, in that community. And actually, some of the silence, the local chief were a little, I would say, hostile, not very sympathetic with our presentation because in that island, they, for some reason, they decided that they will not relocate for now. Um, the, so the, and, and on the other hand, um, so this community took the decision. It's not that the government, no one convinced them to relocate. They took the decision of, 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 doing, of doing this. They, but at the same time, the government was planning some um, several um, projects, several interventions in the area. So the, because of their autonomous status, um, the government approached to them and said, hey, we want to build a health center here. And they say, oh, yeah, we, we know where, um, where that, um, that health center can be built. And the same with the school. And they selected the place, the people. So it's a, very, a kind of very unique situation because you find that, uh, typically it's the opposite. The government decides where to build it. They put the land and, and, and they donated the land for that. The same with the school. And so that's why uh, I mentioned before uh, during the presentation that you arrive there and you find three interventions, and it seems like there's a plan here for relocating, and there is not. I talked to uh, people from the Inter-American Development Bank in charge of those programs, and they have no clue that the community of Kabisubdu was planning to relocate. Uh, and they have the um, health center and the uh, uh, school complex. So the way as 
I, I think that that um, tell how those projects are, are, are run, They're really disconnected one from, from another, and no one was looking at the big picture. And again, I think that the, by looking at this, the big picture of what, was, what is going on in Gardi Sudup and in the whole Gunayala region is where what you really realize the scale of, and of the problem and uh, the scale of the challenges. Um, regarding the peninsula principles, yeah, the peninsula principles uh, um, on climate displacement um, were drafted by a group of um, expert, uh, experts in climate dis uh, on displacement, uh, some um, academics, people from the uh, UN agencies. Uh, this is a non-binding uh, document uh, that and the, um, is the, uh, currently is the only um, instrument or set of principles out there uh, for uh, at least that I am aware of, uh, specifically um, for um, um, in, uh, climate displaced people, internal, uh, internal displacement uh, caused by uh, climate change. Um, so it was drafted at the end of last year, and the hope is that by the use, uh, by affected communities, by advocates of those communities, by governments, uh, little by little, they, they became uh, like the principles to follow or that, uh, that the UN um, decided to um, use it as an input for a better instrument. Um, so, but so far is uh, the only thing that, uh, that we have and um, because this planning solution was the, the, the organization behind. If you go there, it seems that um, all those activities were part of a coordinated plan by the Panamanian government for our location. But unfortunately, the reality is that each intervention has been completely disconnected from uh, one from the next. So let's, let's look at some of those interventions in detail, and a little bit of detail, the health center. Uh, so the, uh, Panamanian Ministry of Health is currently investing, or, or in the previous government, um, that ended around the beginning of this year, uh, they invested heavily in um, among the external reasons. Um, there have been unexpected delays on the relocation process, and four years have already passed, passed since the first time the community started preparing the relocation site. Um, so some of those uh, reasons are, as I mentioned, changes in the leadership level of Gardi Subdub, uh, delays by the Ministry of Housing regarding the construction of the, the first 65 houses, um, and also there have been many false promises or promises that have not yet materialized, which have contributed to creating a lot of frustration and uncertainty about the, the relocation. So let's, let's check um, now a little bit about infrastructure, infrastructure all over the countries. One of the health centers that is currently in the process of being built is located in Gardi Subtu with an investment, uh, investment of $11.6 million with funds mainly from a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank. The construction started in October 2011 and officially was planned that they will be finished by June of 2014. Um, however, when we visited uh, the first time in March, at the end of March uh, of this year, this is what we found. Um, so I will say for um, that the American uh, standards, this is a kind of thing that some of the reasons of this are internal. Um, the relocation process has created some natural tensions among the Gunas themselves at several levels. There are different um, criteria among the Guna General Congress, the, the, the big um, decision-making body, uh, and the local congresses regarding how to handle the relocation. Uh, there have been some differences among individuals in the Gardi uh, Subdub community itself, uh, differences between people who live in Gardi Subdub and the diaspora in Panama City, um, and also some tensions with members of other Guna communities who would like to relocate to Gardi Subdub uh, new site about the role of the Panamanian government in the relocation from that um, Gardi Subdub island. Um, we believe that the Panamanian government has taken a very fragmented approach to relocation in Gunayala, 
and has not developed any coordinated or systematic uh, plan in this regard. Several ministers have developed some very impressive projects in the area of Gardi Subdu, such as building a health center and a school complex, and there is a promise to build a first group of 65 houses. Uh, those, um, these projects are being implemented on land, also provided by the community uh, next to the relocation site or the planned uh, relocation site. As a result, 